So let's do this problem where we've got a mixing chamber. So imagine you have a mixing chamber and there's three streams. Two are going in and one is coming out. The mixing chamber is maintained at 20 PSI. So this stream is coming in, it's water, it's coming in at 20 PSI at 50 degrees Fahrenheit at a rate of 300 pounds per minute. And this one's coming in at 20 PSI at 240 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is gonna be a superheated vapor and this one is gonna be a compressed liquid. So you're mixing superheated vapor and liquid um, to get out uh, some heated, medium heated stream. So this could be like a manufacturing process or a cooking process or something like that. So there's some heat escaping, uh, 180 BTUs per minute, and it's escaping to the environment, which is at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the exit stream is 20 PSI and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So the question might say, what's the entropy generated? So we're looking for uh, the, the rate here. So that's S gen dot. That's what the question is asking for. So this seems pretty straightforward. I could write the, uh, the second law here or the entropy generation equation, which would look something like this. So you have the change in the system, whatever's in the control volume with the entropy, plus you have all the sums of the uh, reversible heat exchange plus the mass of the entropy being carried in minus the mass of entropy being carried out plus this, this gen term. Now, uh, this is being done in steady state with this mixing process. So steady state would just mean the left-hand side is zero. So that's steady. That's why it's gone. And you've got two streams in and one stream out. So I could rearrange this equation for S gen and uh, S gen then would be equal to minus this heat exchange, Q sub K divided by T sub K, and then minus the inlet stream, minus the second inlet stream, plus the third inlet stream. I, I numbered these streams. This one is going to be called one, two, and three just for convenience. So I think we got some information here. Why don't we fix the states at this point and uh, see where we're at? So just by looking up state one, this inlet stream, um, I can see that it is compressed liquid. And um, so I'm going to go to the compressed liquid tables, but they're not there. So I'm going to have to estimate the values as a function uh, of temperature using the saturated liquid properties. So I'm going to get the H there and the S. And then here's state two. It turns out to be a superheated vapor. So that's going to be uh, easy enough to find. Do some interpolation off the charts. And then finally, compressed liquid is state three. So if I look at this, I was given m.1 up here, m.1. I've obtained, I, I was given this stuff. I don't know m.2 or m.3. So I still have some, some, something to do here. So what would you do next? I still have three unknowns. I got M.2, M.3, and S gen. So the answer is just to write more equations, right? More unknowns means more equations. So I could come back and write the continuity equation for this problem. So initially the continuity equation, uh, you know, the, for all systems is, uh, and I'm going to work in rate form here, would be the change of mass in the system, M2 minus M1, equals the rate of mass entering the system minus the rate of mass exiting the system. So again, this is steady. So that term is going to be zero. And I have one inlet, uh, sorry, two inlets and one exit. So M.1 plus M.2 minus M.3. So I can arrange and solve for one of my M dots and get rid of one of my unknowns. I still have one more. And so I'm going to write the first law. And uh, this will be my third equation for my three unknowns. So the left-hand side, again, pertains only to what's going on in this control volume. And so in this system, the control volume is constant. It's just sitting here. Uh, steam is coming in and out of, this, of the system and uh, it's operating in steady state. So the whole left-hand side is gonna be zero. And I don't have any QNs or work in or work out, so I can simplify this down to just this for the first law, m dot h1 plus m dot h2 
minus m dot h3 minus q out. And I recognize from the first law here that I could get rid of m dot 3 by substituting in m dot 2, m dot 1. So I can, with the properties that I've already obtained from my states, I could uh, calculate then my unknown, which would be solving then for m dot 2. Once I get m dot 2, I, I know m dot 1 and m dot 2, so I could solve for m dot 3 and get those values. And then finally, I could plug it into my entropy generation equation, S gen equals minus K over TK minus M dot S1, S2, S3. Now, the one thing to keep in mind here is, is this sign convention that's come up a couple of times. So notice this is just QK. It's not in or out. This was given as Q and it's really Q out. And we always write them as a positive quantity. Q in or Q out are positive. But when we're talking about Q, and we don't know whether it's in or out, we have to specify the sign. So when I plug in this Q out in for Q, really, it's Q is going to be minus Q for 180 degrees, uh, 180 BTUs per pound mass. So this minus times this minus is going to give me a plus. So this Q out will end up being plus 180 over this bar field temperature of 70 degrees, plus, of course, uh, to get it into Rankine. So be careful with this sign convention. This is where it comes into play. In the first law, we specify whether it's in or out, and we always stick a positive number in there, and the sign is built in right there for the work and for the heat transfer. But when we talk about the second law or the entropy generation equation, we have to be careful that we abide by the sign convention. Anyway, from here, it's pretty straightforward plug and chug. You plug in these numbers, and the final answer I get is 8.65 BTUs per minute ranking.